straight line across here. Too much of that. Take it out a little bit of it. I'm using smaller stones here. I don't really need that much. Make sure it's all even. See, the thing about this is, instead of, this is not like a glue base, you can still make adjustments as you go. You know, you don't have, you're not committed to it until you actually cure it. That's the one thing I like about using this. So, it's straight. Go ahead, go ahead. Just flash cure, and we'll do the other hand over here. This stuff's actually really strong. This gem glue. Don't need a lot of it since these are small stones I'm using. I just want it to stick. And it's sticky. Those stones are gonna fall everywhere. Straight. And we're good to go. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's do the thumb first. I'm just gonna do a crown around the thumb. Put my seal it right up to the thumb area here. This one may be too big. We don't need you that big. This is good. See a lot of people put these stones up here in this cuticle area. They put them like, <laughs> there's like a little gap. There shouldn't be a little gap. There shouldn't be a gap, okay? When you have put the stones up in the cuticle, it has to be snug right up to the cuticle, okay? No gap. No gap, you go to the mall. Beautiful. Nice and snug. Just like that. Just, just like that, see that? glue and you see it's kind of like stringy and I'll be able to just apply it just enough okay I want too much the reason you don't want too much is that you don't want well, the moment you press the gems on you want the glue to go all over the place okay you just want just enough around the stone
I'm not trying to glue it to the cuticle area, but it has to be flush to the cuticle area so that when it grows out, it doesn't look like it grew out, okay? Okay, switch. Now our last thing we do is sprinkle on our, remember, remember this nail? I'm going to take my flat brush and I'm gonna apply the builder gel. A nice coat. Not too thick, not too thin, okay? Anywhere I apply this. The fixie beads are gonna go. You guys probably seen this done before, but a lot of people actually overdo this, okay? Once you have this on, you need to just readjust it, kind of lightly tap it. You don't want it too much on the sides because they'll get caught. This is a wear and tear design, okay? This stays on as long as it possibly can. The problem is I see a lot of people, it's, just, it's too beaded, it sticks up too much, you gotta press it down on the nail. So that half, at least half the, the bead is, is encased in the product. You don't want anything to stick out too much because you don't want to get it caught up. Just gotta clean up the side area. Yes, you'll miss you'll miss some on the side area, but trust me, you're not gonna miss it on the nail. Oop. I need to put this in like a little container. This is how people leave it. I'll show you. Here, I'll zoom in. This is how I see it online. See that? How it's uneven right there in the tip? No, you need to be able to press that down. Yeah, but you can't put top on this. If you put top on it, it kind of takes away from the, the texture. So that's why we use a builder gel. I, well, I use a builder gel. I don't know why everybody uses this. Because it's kind of thicker. So you, when you press in on it, it kind of just sits in. I'm going to show you a little trick. There you go. I show you guys a little trick how I seal it in. Again, switch. The same thing with this side. This is a little bit thicker, is that? So when you put that little thicker, it has kind of a thickness to it that kind of just lets the beads kind of sink in. It's about half of it will sink into the gel and it'll cure. The other half will come out and give you that texture that you want. Doesn't mean you have to lay this on thick, okay? Thick, but kind of a consistent thick. You don't lose your shape either. Yeah, people will leave it like this. Yeah, it looks good, but you gotta really get it. Clean up the size, tap it in lightly. All right. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, go ahead, switch. Oh, good catch. I got in there. Now we just do that little. I love this. I don't know why. Like if you if you're using, if you're actually using uh, the trays, like if you're using this kind of stuff, have a tray thing, man. Put it back in there. 
Oop, I got a little bit of purple glitter in there. That's okay. I'll have that later. I think the final thing we're doing is just that white, right? Mm -hmm. And the top coat. Gel art paint white out. This is the gel art paint white. It's a little bit thicker, so I can be able to get nice crisp lines with it. We're drawing a V French. paint so it's not gonna be um runny very pigmented so I can get a nice one coat and I don't have to worry about doing two coats and lose my shape a lot of times when you guys are using gel polish yes you're gonna lose your shape this gives a very good pigment so it's very crisp lines you won't lose your shape that's why we have to that's why you know when you see stuff done and you see them in the set and then you try to replicate and then you didn't turn out well it may not be you you just might probably not using the product that they're using this on so yeah, there's certain products that we use for certain things that, you know, give us a little bit of a heads up, an advantage. See this, this gel polish, I don't really need that much. Just very one coat. If I do two coats, I'm gonna lose my shape for sure. So I, let me sure I use gel art paint here. Gonna give a nice coat over everything. Before I cure it, make sure I make my adjustment, make sure everything's nice and crisp. Make sure I don't have too much on the corners. These corners right here are biggest culprits. Go ahead. In the machine. My striper brush is a long brush, my longest. Now you wonder why, why would I use white gel polish? It doesn't stay like a crisp, uh, straight line like this. Because gel polish is very thin, so it's gonna have, it's kind of a more runny consistency. It's not gonna give you that crisp edges like um, a gel art paint is. Even if I remove any excess, I won't lose, I won't lose any pigment. Look at that. We're done. I'm just gonna top coat everything, bring everything into life. Of course, my money back guarantee top coat. That's in my mat. This is my top. Let me put this, the stones away real quick before I knock it over. Now we finish everything off. I'm not gonna paint over my stones. Very thin coat. The 
the key is not to lose our shape, guys, when we're doing all this painting and stuff. I know it can get really frustrating when you lose your shape, right? I feel ya. Been there, done that. See, the shape's still nice and crisp. this I'm just gonna do the sides lightly this taco is gonna come right up to that stick onto those edges and it's gonna have a nice seal it back in Okay, go ahead, Kira. Oh, that's a cute where they sat. Gotta trust the process with these sets, you know? It takes time to do all this. And this top coat is not like a, what you might call it, a, a thin top coat either. It has a little bit medium consistency. That means it's not gonna drip all over the place. Flow over the place. It's not gonna end up in one corner of your edges right here. That's one of the biggest issues. Sealing everything in. And there we are, everybody. Switch. Finish with the set. Get some cuticle oil on here. Keep those real quick. Find my cuticle oil pen. Don't even know where it is. That's okay. There we go. No shape loss.